So, yeah, I don't know where to, where to start this story. Um, probably about a year or more ago, I became aware of Dave Jones's uh, videos that he did about the the, th the Paduk three cent microcontroller and uh, also became aware that uh, there was a forum on EEV blog uh, that looked at this processor or this controller and also how to uh, reverse engineer the programming part of it. And um, I was amazed, like I was amazed firstly that um, the community was, um, was so strong and so knowledgeable uh, and was willing to take this on. Um, but also, you know, as a um, as an A-Tiny 13 guy, an AVR guy, I was really looking forward to a point where, you know, we could take code that I'm currently squeezing into 1K on a, let's say, a 40 uh, cent processor and maybe squeeze it onto a 3 cent processor. It just captivated my imagination, as it, as it probably has a lot of people around the world, actually. And um, so I followed the project and uh, didn't really think that I would you know, dip a toe in the ocean until it became a little more mature and down the road. So just following it sort of in the background, I guess. And then about six months ago, I thought, yep, I'm going to have a go at this. It looks like it's, um, it's really interesting. And even if it's not, you know, going to work, it's just, it's such an interesting project. So, so I started to look at buying the bits and pieces and, um, you know, some of the things I couldn't get uh, through normal supplies, like I was using LCSC uh, a lot then, but something like this um, this microcontroller here, um, and I'll put the I'll put the link to all the bits and pieces, um, which is available by the way. You just do a search, just do a Google search for free PDK, uh, as it sounds, and uh, and GitHub, and you'll get to all of this. But uh, this STM32 processor and a few other bits and pieces on this board, I just couldn't get to. Um, I just couldn't get to it through my through normal uh, supplies. So there was, so the first thing was a split order. So there was um, AliExpress with some bits and pieces and LCSC with some bits and pieces. And in the end, um, it sort of arrived in a staggered fashion and long after I'd ordered it for all the obvious reasons that we're all going through in 2020. So um, finally, uh, probably about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, uh, the bits and pieces were mostly here and what wasn't here I could make up with my own. Uh, so, you know, for instance, if you look at version one, and we'll just um, hone in on that a little bit, there's some things that are pretty obvious. I'll certainly get a decent pointer here. So you've got this abomination at the back. So that's supposed to be a 47 microfarad uh, capacitor right there. I don't have any 47 microfarad capacitors. Um, in a 0603 or a 0805. So I've put some of those on order, but in the meantime, I did have some 22 microfarad uh, capacitors in a 0805. So I've just paralleled them. So that's what this thing is here. So it's, that's pretty weird. Um, I didn't really have too many troubles with the soldering of the STM32. That seemed to go pretty smoothly. And, you know, I botched up some of the LEDs and I botched up some of the um, resistors, but they were pretty forgiving, really. Probably the one that I was worried a, a little about because the voltages just weren't coming out right was this guy here. So this is, a, I think it's an MT3608. And, um, and you can see it here. That is the uh, regulator. Um, and... It was, um, no, that's, sorry, that's not the regulator. Sorry, just, I'm, I'm wrong here. This one here is the, yeah, it is a regulator. It's not the MT3608. This one is, um, let me see if I can get that. That is marked U2, which is the, sorry, it's the RT9193. Um, this is the, um, this is the list that I was using. Um, with a few coffee stains on it now. Um, but yeah, so, um, that is supposed to provide the 3.3 um, volts for uh, the processor, and um, it wasn't. Um, so, you know, that took a little while to, um, to sort out. So the first iteration, um, probably, like, apart from all the problems that I've just outlined, the real problem was at the end here. So this uh, USB um, connector, 
uh, was was just awful. And you can see here it's actually ripped off uh, some of the tracks. And at one point here I had an external, I used this guy here actually, um, and I had um, wires going from here like directly to different points. It was a Frankenstein looking thing and didn't work. Um, so yeah, probably wasted two weeks on, on this one here trying to get it to work and yeah, in the end unsuccessful. Um, I still like the idea of connecting this up because this proved to be a sticking point for you know most of the build. It was it was just awful. Um, some of you now I did mention the MT three six. Let me just get those numbers right. The MT three six oh eight. So that is U six on the diagram, and that one is up here. All right. So this one here generates. Uh, the voltages required for the programming. So the Paduk program requires different voltages. And um, and so coming through our op amp here, I think on pin number four, is supposed to be around the 11 or 12 mark um, volts. And mine wasn't, so this was, this was a mess. And it was a mess for this one and for subsequent ones as well. So yes, um, lots of problems, but you can see here um, the USB um, connector, you know, nasty. Again, nasty. This one here, so this was an interesting uh, variation. So uh, this is version number three. Version number two, well, I'll just go back. So that was version number. Version number two, by the way, was, you know, I could actually communicate with the chip. In fact, I managed to upload uh, the firmware for the chip. Uh, and you're probably wondering why that's off, but that's got a lot to do with version four, not, not version two. So I was communicating with the chip, all was good, and then this thing just went belly up, but also through that process, I wasn't able to uh, communicate with the uh, any of the Paduk chips, and, and that was mainly a function of the fact that, that it wasn't getting the right voltages and some other sort of nasty business that was going on. Um, version three, by version three, then this looks like a pretty good job, this one, but in actual fact, that's like the sixth one that I put on there. So I became very adept at uh, desoldering and resoldering uh, that guy. And, um, yeah, look, this one I really don't know. Uh, it just was was dead, and I, I, I have a suspicion now of what the uh, issue is with this one. But um, yeah, again, some of the voltages weren't right. But I wasn't even able to communicate with this chip to put the firmware on it. So um, yeah, that's that's not good. Version four, um, you know, I took great care. So it took around about a week or so. Uh, to solder up just bits and pieces at a time. So it took a lot of time to do it. Did a lot of testing of uh, the voltages and the connections on the way, checking, you know, continuity. And and uh, there is some information out there about what different voltages are supposed to be at different points. I got to know the circuit uh, or the programming circuitry a lot better. So I got to know what these things were actually doing. Because, I mean, earlier on, when I got to this point here and failed, I actually... Um, went online to the forum and said, hey, how about we do this with through-hole and posted a ridiculous picture of uh, a through-hole version of this, which, you know, I think I'm pretty sure you can make a through-hole version, but I didn't understand enough of the, what, what the components in the circuitry was doing to actually attempt that. So um, that was the, um, uh, well, they talk about the hubris of youth, but that was the hubris of, a, of an old man. Um, so, yeah, so, the, so I might revisit that through-hole version at some point, but now that I've got a much better understanding of how this whole thing hangs together. So yeah, as I said, took great amount of care with this thing. Uh, again, this USB connector proved to be a bit of a problem. That, that's the third one. And I do have um, a bit of a clue as to what I'm gonna do in the next one. So I'll just show you what the blank looks like if I've got one here. Yeah, so this is the PCB as it comes in. Here we go. I only got five in this. I've got another ten on the way because I'm like a dog with a bone with this project. I've never certainly solved a problem by giving up. So I'm really uh, diving down the rabbit hole a little bit. But this is how the board arrives. And um, yeah, this is from PCB Way. Um, so they're um, you know, they make a beautiful board and and but based on the design from the uh, from the forum. Um, yeah. So you know it's. With this one here, um, and and you can sort of see, oh, maybe it'll focus in. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, we'll see if I can actually get that to focus right in on here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can see here that the um, this is quite quite small, 
But what's really the problem is that these holes, when you go to put the uh, USB connector in, it doesn't hold. And, and then it sort of flips up and all sorts of things. So what I'm going to do is, I'm act because that's actually quite big, that hole there, so I'm actually going to put um, some offcuts through here. So I, can, I keep all the um, offcuts from resistors and things like that. Let's see if I can grab one out and show you what I mean. Um, go back to focus on this guy. Can I focus back on that guy? Yes, I can. That's nice. All right. So, um, yeah, as you probably get yourself, you know, these leftover bits and pieces. So I'm actually going to put, you know, like some of those over the top of the USB connector over this this part here and down into that. So, um, yeah, that's that's proved to be a real, <laughs> a real issue for me. Um, and, um, yeah, that was... Um, that was my undoing, but I eventually got eventually got a lot more confident and a lot better at putting this on. So this one is only only took two uh, uh, versions of this to put it on because what I was doing was I was actually adding quite a bit of solder to the side. It was leaking onto the inside of this connector and then preventing uh, the actual plug from from going in. So anyway, I was very confident about this. Uh, I've got the Frankenstein uh, capacitors up here still, but everything else looked pretty good. However. Um, I wasn't able to communicate, it said no programmer there, and it was just so frustrating. And then what I remembered was that the version two I was able to communicate with, so I thought, oh, okay, so that actual chip uh, was programmed up fine. So I got my um, hot air gun, and um, that's another story in itself, actually, because you know the hot air came in, and um, on version four, uh, all, this, all these components here, actually um, sort of dislodged and then stuck together. So, I mean, oh my God, it was just such a drama. And in fact, um, when I'll, I'll do a close up on this here. So these holes here actually melted. But in the end, in the end, I was able to, um, this this chip here is actually from here. So I desoldered the one that I knew was working. And I think ultimately, like part of the main problem of not being able to get this program working apart from my dodgy soldering skills and my lack of understanding of the um, of the actual circuitry but a real issue um, was actually the chips themselves so this chip here which is was originally in here does not does not work and you know maybe I could do some further work on that down the track but that was that was the issue so I just swapped that out and now we have a working Paduk programmer so um, let's plug a chip in and um, and see some blinking lights because um, at the end of the day you know that's what it's all about so yes I hadn't realized I'd rabbit it on so much during that um, explanation so what I might do is I might hold off the actual um, programming process because there's still a little bit to go through and um, yeah we'll do that in the next uh, video but yeah, just to highlight again uh, where I went wrong and, and what happened, let's just have a look, quick look at um, version 1. I still don't know where that STM32 is legit. I do know that a lot of those connections are not legit and that USB at the end is just a mess. So that's never going to work, um, particularly with the wires that I strung in there eventually. So we got to the second version and uh, it did work. I was able to communicate with the... Uh, SDM32 which was great again obviously lots of problems with the USB on the end there um, and not able to uh, in the end talk to any Padux probably because of voltage issues on the programmer. Version 3 uh, was promising I ran out of 0603 uh, parts so version 3 and version 4 contain some 0805 parts in there so a little bit Frankenstein but um, only if you're looking hard. Uh, the USB uh, finally worked, and um, but I think that the, uh, the chip itself, the STM32, is dead. So yeah, next time we'll uh, we'll get version four up and running and actually uh, program some chips.